Chapter 7. Houses of the Birth Chart An astrological horoscope is divided into 12 arcs, equal in terms of time and space. The arcs are of 30 degrees each, one twelfth of the circle of 360 degrees. The beginning of the first house is the degree that, from a given point on the Earth's surface, was rising above the horizon at a given moment of time. This point is the ascendant just as the opposite point is the descendant. Between them is the midheaven, tenth house, and the opposite point below the earth is called the nadir, fourth house. These are the angles of the figure. The houses which fall away from these angles are called angular houses, first, fourth, seventh, and tenth houses. The next houses to the angles are called the succeeding houses, second, fifth, eighth, and eleventh. The remaining four houses are called the Cadent Houses, 3rd, 6th, ninth, and 12th Houses. Planets in the Angular Houses are the most powerful, for they are active on the material level and play strongly on the personal self and its affairs. Planets in the Succeedent Houses are tied up with the emotional nature and the individual's desires. Planets in Cadent Houses are indicative of energies in the mind and mental equipment. They are less obvious and not apparent on the surface, but have a very definite effect on the thinking. First house. What you look like. The personal self. Its chief characteristic is action. Destiny in the making. The present. Defines the personality. Appearance, disposition, and manner. Outlook on life. The window through which you view the world. Second house, what you own, your resources, financial standing, money, possessions, peace of mind, manner in which person meets obligations, repository of the strongest desires, that which the life is dedicated to redeem, therefore the house of values, earning and spending capacity. Third house, what you think, your ability to relate to your environment. The synthesizing powers of the conscious mind. Dexterity, duality, restlessness. Early education and early environment. Short journeys. Brothers and sisters and their attitude toward the person. Acquaintances and neighbors. Writings, news, communications, rumors. Memory, perception, and speech. Taken for granted skills. Fourth house. Your base of operations. In the outer world, your home. In the inner world, your soul. That which is hidden in the depths of the self. Index to home and all domestic affairs. Counsels him whether to stay or to leave his birthplace and, adva and, and advantage to be gained in either course. Defines nature of one's residence. End of matters. The latter part of life. Matters relating to real estate and property. Least prominent parent in the life. Some say it rules the mother, others the father. Depends on which is boss, 10th house. Outcome of any matter in horary astrology. The 5th house. Self-expression. Any effort put forth to distinguish yourself from others. Children you create. Books you write. Affections you display. Anything that bears your personal stamp. All emotional and romantic tendencies coming from the heart. The house of hidden karma. Misuse of the will and the love principle. Rules children, children of the mind and emotions as well as the body. Speculation, amusement, dramatics, theater, schools. Love affairs and luck or lack of it shown in this house. The sixth house. House of self-adjustment. House of work and health or lack of either. They are tied together. The busy person has no time to be sick. Food, clothing, comforts, and domestic pets. Mental or physical conflicts resulting from the expression of the ego. As such, depicts any enmity between the dweller in the body and the physical body, out of which mental, nervous, or organic disease may develop. It is an obscure arc, since the nature of service rendered or received is more or less personal, unob unobtrusive, and routine. It has been termed the house of service in that it portrays one's capacity to serve, as well as the character and qualities of those who serve him, his employees and dependents, 
and his relations with them. Sixth house action is generally under the person's control, whereas twelfth house inhibitions, repressions, and frustrations spring from causes over which the person has no control. Working conditions, if you are employed, are shown in this house. The seventh house, the house of the not-self, in opposition to the personal self. The angle of relationship, the beginning of the individuality rather than the personal concerns. The we consciousness, marriage and partnerships. Cooperation or the lack of it. Rules the lower courts where the ninth house rules the higher courts. Open adversaries. The eighth house, house of generation, sex, degeneration or regeneration. Regeneration through enlargement of viewpoint, both spiritual and mental. Death and the manner of it rules the psychic levels, the astral plane, and people with planets here have often brought over a legacy of sensitivity to invisible currents. If the planets in this house are afflicted, the individual has been involved in the misuse of psychic fa facilities. This is particularly true if Mars is afflicted to Neptune or in this house. Rules legacies and goods of the dead. As it is the second from, mar from the marriage house, it rules the partner's possessions and financial conditions. Every eighth house operation is a celestial messenger in disguise and a challenge to penetrate this disguise and become the recipient of the blessing he bears. In the wake of an eighth house storm, there's always a rainbow if we but lift our eyes to perceive it. The ninth house. Realm of the superconscious mind and the deeply ingrained religious philosophy of the life, of the self. Intuition, inspiration, spiritual visions, long journeys, expansion of horizons both mental and spiritual. House of the spirit, probability of distant travel, timing, nature, and results. World, worldwide contacts and mental adjustment to racial ideas. With an author, his works from the standpoint of publication, understanding. House that rules in laws. Third from the seventh house. The tenth house. Prestige, honor, and standing in society. Amplifier of the personality as the public looks at him. Professional career, reputation. His father. Employers if he does not work for himself. If he does work for himself, his work comes in this house. Eleventh house. Goals and objectives. Friendships, social relationships, hopes, wishes, projects, and ambitions. The ruler of this house and the planets in it are an index to his idea of happiness and the probabilities of his attaining it. With an afflicted 11th house, one has to work harder to attain satisfaction on the outer levels. The 5th and 11th houses are an index to the personal and emotional desires. The 9th and the 11th houses indicate higher levels of consciousness as to both mind and emotion. If the ruler of the 11th is stronger than the ruler of the 7th, the person's friends and helpers are stronger than his enemies. The 12th house, the house of drawn shades, that which is hidden. The subconsciousness attitudes that are a hangover from the past. House of self undoing, frustration, limitation, and confinement. Also the house of initiation and ultimate understanding. Service or suffering. With planets in this house, it has to be a choice between one or the other. House of Charity, given or received. House of Karma, the law of cause and effect, from which there is no escape without atonement and attunement to that which above, which is above and beyond the law, the grace of God. Rules hospitals and institutions. The third house rules the conscious mind. The ninth house rules the superconscious mind. And the twelfth house rules the subconscious mind. The first six houses are more under the personal control of the individual than the last six houses. They are related to the not-self and are more under the sway of other people. For instance, his bodily health, six house, is under the control and largely dependent on his own actions. But twelfth house matters are beyond his control, and that they comprise inhibition, inhib inhibitive, inhibitive influences Repressions, frustration, even loss of personal liberty dependent upon the way others react toward him and are the sort of things that must be endured if they cannot be cured. Yet rightly used, the 12th house represents subjective sustainment. 
Its motto is serve or suffer, and the choice is in your hands. The houses are divided into four trinities. The trinity of life. The first, body. The fifth, soul. The ninth, spirit. The trinity of association, relationships. The third, brothers and sisters. The seventh, marriage and partnerships. The eleventh, ties of friendships, close associates, and advisors. The trinity of wealth, temporal or possessive houses. The second, possessions, property, and resources. The sixth, comforts such as food, clothing, servants, and help. The tenth, honor, prestige, credit, business, or professional standing. The trinity of psychism. The fourth, the environment in each epoch of life with particular reference to old age. The eighth, the influence of others upon his environment, particularly with respect to the effect upon him of their death, by way of inheritance and inherited responsibilities. The twelfth, service to those limited and restricted or suffering due to self-undoing, influences that can retard or accelerate growth. The first house is the most important of the angular houses. The angular houses are concerned with making manifest and concrete, bringing out into the open, unveiling and manifesting whatever may be latent in the personality. Important facts to remember. In astrology, you are dealing with the following factors. Planets are the energies that are operating. They are the what that is operating. The signs are the character. They are the how the individual has used the energies in other lifetimes. Wise use is shown by planets and signs they rule and in their places of exaltation. Planets in their falls and detriments show the misuse of the energies, and there are the ones that show defects in character which need changing. The houses are circumstances, the environment through which the energies operate. They are the where you do it. The blue, your blueprint shows why you are here, why you are here now, why you are where you are. Astrology is a dynamic potentiality, not a static fact. It is the use you make of the power or planets that builds your world. The horoscope is an x-ray or blueprint of the personal self. It shows how we operate within the magnetic field. Life flows, energy is released through action, changes take place. An empty house does not mean lack of activity, but the absence of serious problems there. In the houses where there are no planets, there is more freedom of action. The houses where planets are placed are more vital issues in life. What you want, the planet. Where you seek it, the house. How you go about it, the sign. Retrograding planets. 